In this video, I'm going to answer the questions, how do you fix a poor man's cover call that's gone deep in the money? How do you adjust a poor man's cover call to avoid assignment? And what actually happens if a poor man's cover call is assigned? Let's get started. First and briefly, a poor man's cover call is a position in which we own a longer term call option. And for us, that almost always means owning a leaps call option. And the second part of the poor man's cover call is a call option that we have sold. The only difference between a poor man's covered call and a covered call is that with a covered call, you own 100 shares of a stock and have sold one call option contract against it. Where this becomes a challenge is if the call option that you sold, if it goes deep in the money. You see, with a covered call, if that call option is assigned, then 100 shares of the underlying stock that you own is called out of your account. The problem with a poor man's covered call is that you don't own 100 shares you own a longer term call option. If the person that bought that shorter call option from you assigns it and 100 shares of underlying stock are caught out of your account, you will be short 100 shares of stock because you don't own 100 shares of stock to begin with to give to them. So if a poor man's cover call is assigned, your position will look like this. You would still own your longer term call option contract, but you'd also be short 100 shares of the underlying stock for each call option contract that was assigned. Obviously, we don't want this to happen. So how can we adjust a position in which a call option that we have sold goes deep in the money. The simplest strategy is to roll the short call option up and out in time. Here you see a poor man's cover call that we're in right now in Apple. We own the June of 2023 115 call option and right now we are short the January of 2022 155 call option. Here you see the daily chart of Apple. On the left side of the arrow, at the base of the arrow, that's the day we entered this poor man's covered call in Apple, which was August 27th. The challenge of this position is that Apple has increased in price quite a bit. In just three months, it's gone up almost 9%. Because of that, a couple weeks ago, on November 18th, the 150 call option that expired on the third Friday of November, well, it was $8 in the money. What's even more of a problem is that as you can see here, where the purple arrow is, down the volume section, the buying pressure appears to be increasing. This tells us that most likely Apple's upward movement is going to continue. So what can we do to put ourselves in a more favorable position in this poor man's covered call and avoid the call option from being assigned? Here you see the trade we did. On November 18th, we bought to close the third Friday of November 150 call option that was about to expire. That cost us $7.44 per share. Simultaneously, we sold to open the third Friday of January 155 call option for $7.89 per share. So we're able to roll our short call option up by $5 and still pocket 45 cents per share. Now a little background information on this trade. I've been playing with this roll order for about a week or two before it got filled. I was trying to roll it up to the third Friday of December. However, there just wasn't enough spread after buying the November option back and selling the December one to walk away for a break even, or even better, for a credit. Because of that, we went out two months and we were able to get the short call option strike price rolled up and out in time. Here's the chart of Apple through today, November 29th. As you can see, there's still a very high probability that Apple will continue higher if nothing unforeseen happens because there's still a lot of buying pressure and it continues to make higher highs and higher lows. That leads to the next scenario that I want to talk you through. What do you do when a poor man's covered call has gone really deep in the money? Well, I've got a position I can show you with that exact scenario here in Microsoft. Here's the trade we did on August 27th when we entered this poor man's covered call in Microsoft. We bought the June of 2023 235 call option and simultaneously sold the October 15th 315 call option. Let me show you what's happened with Microsoft since then. As you can see, Microsoft has advanced nicely where you see the white horizontal line. That's the short call option strike price that we sold when we initiated this poor man's covered call. What made this position more challenging is that on September 28th, where you see the purple arrow, Microsoft actually turned bearish. So we rolled our short call strike price down to 305. Microsoft did stay under our short strike price for several weeks, but then it took off. And as a result, there wasn't much time value left in that short call option. So on November 12th, we knew that we were in a position that if we didn't do something about it, there was a very high risk that the call option would be assigned. The problem was that where you see the purple arrow at, on November 12th, Microsoft was trading for $337 per share. So the 305 call option was $32 in the money. Because of that, we couldn't just roll the short call strike price up and out without going really far out in time. So what can we do to generate enough cash to roll our strike price up? Here's what we did. We bought to close the third Friday of November 305 call option. That cost us $29.99 per share. Simultaneously, we sold the third Friday of January 310 call option for $29.14 per share. Now we could have left it at that, but the problem is that I don't like to roll options for a debit. 
Yes, our long leaps call option, it had increased in value nicely. But at this point, we're out of pocket 85 cents per share for rolling this short call. So notice on the bottom line here that in order to avoid rolling this call for a debit, simultaneously we also sold the third Friday of January far out of the money $305 put option. For that, we were paid $3.80 per share. So in all, we were able to roll our short call option up by $5 and still pocket $2.95 per share. Microsoft will have to drop over 10% in order for this short put option to be challenged. And if it is challenged, then our call option will be in a position where we should be able to roll it out for some really nice cash flow. When you've done a poor man's cover call or a regular cover call, and you don't want the call option to be assigned, it's very important to keep an eye on how much time value is left in that short option. For example, since we are now short the January $310 call option, and I want to make sure this option is not assigned to us, to avoid that from happening, I need to keep an eye on how much time value is left in that option. If you're dealing with a non-dividend paying stock and the short call option is in the money, the easiest way to do this is to look at the corresponding put option it's selling for. That will approximately give you a quick estimate of how much time value is left in the short call option because 100% of that out of the money put option will be time value premium. Here you see that the January 21st 310 put option is trading for between $4 and $4.25 per share or about $4.12 per share. That is still a ton of time value premium left in that option. So at this point, there's absolutely no risk of this 310 short call option being assigned to us. This is my favorite way to adjust a poor man's cover call that has gone deep in the money on me. Just keep in mind that if you decide to use this technique, you have sold a put option. So if the underlying stock were to decline in price below your put option strike price, you could be assigned stock if you didn't adjust that put option. But by using this technique, we're able to roll this short call option up and out in time and still pocket some nice cash. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. But what happens when a poor man's cover call is actually assigned to us? What does that look like and how do we fix that situation? If you keep a close eye on how much time value is left in a short call option, there's really no reason why a covered call option should be assigned to you. The reason for that is because the owner of that call option, they'd be better off just selling the option out on the open market as compared to assigning it if it still has a decent bit of time value premium left in it. You see, if they assign that call option, whatever time value is left in that option, well, they just give it to you because they forfeit the time value portion of that option at assignment. Where this becomes challenging is when there's no time value left in that call option. Or if the time value left in a call option is less than a dividend that is to be paid on an underlying stock and the stock is about to go ex-dividend. So if you're trading a dividend paying stock, it's important to keep an eye on how much time value is left in the option compared to the dividend if it's about to go ex-dividend. You see, there's a whole trading strategy focused on capturing dividends. If you sold a call option and the underlying is about to go ex-dividend and the dividend is a lot more than how much time value premium is left in that call option, it's likely that the stock is going to be called away from you. If that happens, this is what you need to do to fix the position. Now, you will still own your longer term call option. Your broker will most likely do nothing with that call option. However, the call option that you sold that was assigned, that will result in you being short 100 shares per contract, or you will have shorted the stock. In order to return to a poor man's cover call position, you'll simply need to buy 100 shares per contract back and sell a new call option against your longer term call that you still own. This will return you to the same poor man's cover call position that you were in before. I would suggest if this happens, make sure to sell a new call option farther out in time so that you have enough time value premium in that option so the new short call option will not be also assigned. Now you're back to the position that you started with, a poor man's covered call. If you'd like to receive alerts when we do trades similar to the ones I showed in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more details on how we trade options using leaps and poor man's covered calls, check out the video series at the link above and description below entitled Leaps Options. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.